atoms and neutrons and muons and protons, dusty old sandstorms and ashes and pollen, specks from the back of fruit flies on the wing. These are a few of the particle things. Dandruff that falls from my scalp as I wrestle, sweeping the dirt with the tendrils and tassels, spittle that shoots from my mouth when I sing. These are a few of the particle things. Hello, my name is Iggy Noramus, Professor Emeritus of the University of Paramus, specializing in the epidemiology of arthritis. But today we are not going to talk about arthritis. Today we are going to discuss the most important scientific discovery of the past 50 years, the establishment of the existence of the Higgs bosom particle. The Higgs bosom particle, also known as the oh god particle, or that goddamn particle, is thought to be responsible for gravity and therefore weight gain. The Higgs bosom particle was first theorized by a hippie at Woodstock in 1969. Since that time, physicists around the world have been endeavoring to prove its existence. A few days ago, at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, not to be confused with Bruce Stern, I can't blow up this forest. Scientists, physicists, and cafeteria professionals have combined their talents to produce this achievement. Trillions of calculations performed by millions of laptops, smartphones, and even the occasional abacus operated by thousands of researchers have combined to produce what is now a reasonable facsimile of the appearance of this subatomic particle. And here it is. As you can see, the most striking thing about the Higgs bosom particle is its symmetrical nature and that it resembles nothing so much as a woman's boob. This would seem to confirm the Mother Nature theory. It also confirms, since it was so hard to find this thing for so long, that Mother Nature is playing very hard to get. You know, I was in line to do research at CERN, but instead they chose a Hungarian PhD who couldn't bathe regularly. Where's the logic in that? I get passed over from a pro for a professor from Budapest with tenure in BO? I could have found this thing a lot faster. I've been pulling particles like this out of my rear end for years. Just ask my proctologist. At any rate. In this quadrant, this structure known as the particle teat, or particle nipple, is responsible for the eventual revelation of its existence. This particle decays rapidly, and only by following the trail of neutron emissions, or lepton beams, originating from this particle's teat, was this facsimile able to be formed. Forcing one scientist to quip, it must be lactating leptons. In this quadrant, we see squiggly lines, which are not cracks, but stretch marks. This snapshot was taken at almost the speed of light. And the stresses are enormous for such a transient structure. Therefore, these lines are indicators of Terminal Interspatial Turbulence, or TIT. And here is a strange marking, a perfectly shaped oval. One scientist ran the numbers and discovered it is almost identical to the logo of DuPont. So what does all this mean? Obviously, to produce progress from here, we would have to find more bosoms. 
Theory suggests that sizes could range from the subatomic to the nanoscale, analogous to ping pong ball and large watermelon sizes. Pairs, of course, would have to be found. Then, to arrest the decay, they would have to be sheathed in a subatomic bra constructed entirely of clusters of carbon atoms. Then it would be possible to prove other planes of existence, prove other dimensions, provide a fountain of youth for Hugh Hefner, a hot date for Susan Boyle, or provide consistently exceptional egg foo young. This is Iggy Noramus, and you are now abreast.